Hello everyone. This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 6.4.1.2, the Skills Integration Challenge for Chapter 6. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Cisco RNS Routing and Switching Essentials Version 6 curriculum. Now, in this particular lab, we've got a few things going on. We've got our VLAN for each one of these PCs A, B, C, and D. We got VLAN 10 for PC A, VLAN 20 for PC B. VLAN 30 for PCC and VLAN 88 for PCD. I know they're kind of hard to see, but it's A, B, C, and D from left to right. They're all going through uh, switch one here. Um, we've got some ranges that we want to set up for each one of the VLANs. Um, so, you know, these are going to be in access mode going to each PC. Uh, this needs to be in trunking mode going up to the router G01. The router, remember the physical interface with inner VLAN routing does not need, and this is G00 on this side, this does not need an IP address for the physical interface, we just need to turn it on. And then we configure our sub interfaces over here according to our address and table. And that corresponds to each VLAN. Uh, we will have a default gateway for the switch. We will have a interface VLAN 88. That's the management VLAN that we're going to use. Uh, the native VLAN we're going to use is 99, and we're going to set that up on G01. Uh, R1, other than the sub-interfaces, we do have to configure the, uh, the serial interface here, uh, 000, that goes up to HQ. Okay, so we need to make sure that's configured. We need to make sure it's configured on HQ as well. Um, then we have some direct directly attached static routes to make sure we have end-to-end -end connectivity. So we have to be able to reach that outside host here. So we're going to configure directly attached static routes on our, on HQ to be able to reach the outside host. We're going to configure four directly attached static routes um, to reach the uh, each VLAN. So we need to look at like what network is each one of those a part of. We configure a default static route on R1 uh, to be able to reach um, HQ and everything else. Uh, and then we're going to make sure everything works. So that's kind of an overview before we get started. So the first step they say is to configure inner VLAN routing on R1 based on our address and table. So we're going to kind of cover this portion right here that I highlighted. So on R1, All right, we're going to go into configuration mode. We're going to do interface G00 is the physical port. And we're just going to do no shut. Okay, and then exit back out. That's all we need to do for the physical port is turn it on. Now we're going to go into our G00, but it's dot and then whatever VLAN we're doing. So dot 10. Okay, you see it turns on automatically. That's why I turned on the physical port first. Otherwise, you'd have to turn on each individual uh sub interface and then go back and turn on the physical as well. All right, so we got that. Then we want to set up our encapsulation dot one Q and then whatever VLAN that one is carrying, which is 10. We try to keep that the same. All right, IP add 172.31.10.1, subnet mask, and we can exit out. It's already turned on. Interface G0 slash 0 dot 20, encap dot one Q 20, And then the IP add, and you notice that's in a separate network in the 20 network. They try to keep those the same just for ease of configuration. So you got like the G0 slash 0 dot 10 is covering for, or is going to be uh, encapsulating for VLAN 10. It's on network 172.31.10, right? Same thing with 20. It's dot 20, dot 1Q20. The 172.31.20 network, right? So we kind of try to keep that the same again for ease of configuration. Uh, <clears throat> interface G0 slash 0 dot 30. Incap dot 1Q 30. IP add 172.31.30.1 dot 1. Dot 255.255.255.0. Zero. Interface G00.88, NCAP.1Q88, IP add 172.31.88.1, subnet mask, then interface G00.99, 
cap.1q99, copy add 172.31.99.1, and put your subnet mask in there. So that covers all of our uh, inner VLAN routing interfaces. Um, now I'm going to do a show run here just to see if our serial interfaces, you see all of our sub interfaces are listed here. We do not have a physical IP or we do not have an IP address on the physical interface. We just turned it on. Okay. And it looks like they have configured the serial interface on the other side here, S000. So we're good there as well. Now it says configure trunking on S1. Now the port that if we kind of think about all this traffic converging here and having to go up to R1 even before it comes back down to another PC for inter VLAN, so meaning like between different VLANs, then this needs to carry multiple VLANs. So we need to set up G01 in trunking mode. All right, so let's do interface G01 switch port mode trunk. Now we're going to come back in a minute because we haven't um, configured the VLANs yet. I don't believe. Let's see. I don't know if they've already done it. So let's see. Do show VLAN brief. Okay, they've already got the VLANs for us, so we don't have to do that. You see, we've got VLAN 10, 20, 30, 88, and 99. So let's go back to G01 for a minute because we also need to make sure we put any trunking one, we have to assign a native VLAN, remember? So we see over here, G01, we need a native VLAN 99. So switch port mode trunk was the first command we did. Switch port trunk native VLAN 99 should be the next one we do. So we have to make sure we configure that native VLAN. If we have multiple switches to go to, uh, like if switch one was going to another switch and we set it, remember both ends need to be in trunking mode and have the same native VLAN as well. Okay. Uh, now let's make sure again with the show run that we've got um, our IP default gateway set up. Okay, we do. And we've got interface VLAN 88 configured. Okay, so that's awesome. They've already done that for us. Okay. Uh, now it says to, let's make sure that these ranges are also configured correctly. All right, it looks like that they've actually configured um, these ranges as well for us. So like FA0 11 through 15. All right, 11 through 15 all have switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10. Uh, 16 through 20 looks like they've all got switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 20. And then 5 through 10 all have switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 30. And 21 through 24, we want to have switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 88. So that is good as well. All right, so again, we're just kind of going through making sure we've got that stuff. And then we put the trunking mode and the native VLAN on G01, okay? So now we can go to the next spot. It says configure four directly attached static routes on HQ. So we're going to click on HQ, okay? Let's break it down here. And we're going to configure each one of these to reach... VLANs 10, 20, 30, and 88. All right, so remember our directly attached rule we'll go over in a minute, but let's look at each one of these uh, PCs and what network they're part of. So I'm just going to make a little note here, okay? PC A, okay, with VLAN 10 is a part of, you see this IP address is 172.31.10.1, 255.255.255.0. So its network is 172.31.10.0. And its subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 or slash 24 there. Okay. Now PCB is in VLAN 20. 172.31.20.0, 255.255.255.0. Now remember, the way I know that is if I look at this IP address, 172.31.10.1. If this is my subnet mask right here that goes along with it, all right, and then again, same network here with PCA is 10.21. 
this tells me this subnet mask the range. So this network spans from 172.31.10.0 through 172.31.10.255. Just based on this subnet mask, I can tell that. So remember to go back and review your subnetting um, if that's not quite readily you know, visible to you. This this subnet mask of slash 24 or 255.255.255.0 tells me it's taken up that whole fourth octet, okay, from dot zero to dot 255 for 10. Same thing for 20. And then as I go through PCC for VLAN 30, again, 172.31.30.0. Okay, and then PCD then VLAN 88, 172.31.88.0, 255.255.255.0. Okay, and I just make those notes there because we're going to use that on HQ. So our command for a directly attached route or static route is IP route, then where do we want to get to? 172.31.10.0, that handles getting to VLAN 10. It asked me for my subnet mask for a part of that. And then <clears throat> remember there was one of two methods. You could use the next hop IP address, which means you know the recursive method. What IP address am I going to get to next? Or you can use like what interface do I want to send it out of, which I call the local exit interface, but that's also our directly attached method. It wants us to use that directly attached method. So think about if HQ is trying to reach PCA down here, what interface is it sending it out of? It's sending it out of 000, serial 000. So we put here serial 000. Okay. Now we're going to do one of those for each network, IP route 172.31.20.0. 255.255.255.0 is that whole network for PCB, but where do I send it to if I'm trying to reach PCB? Technically, it's going to be the same one to get down here, right? Think about the way the traffic flows, so it's still F000, okay? Then we're going to do another one, IP route, 172.31.30.0, 255.255.255.0, S000, again, if you're trying to leave HQ and reach PCC, that's the way you go. And then lastly, IP route 172.31.88.0.255.255.255.0 S000 again, because again, if HQ wants to reach PCD, it's got to go through S000 first. Okay? So that's that what that directly attached means. That's the method you use at the end here instead of saying send it to S000, whatever this IP address is on R1. That would have been the recursive method, but we didn't want to do that one. Okay. All right. So now that we have those routes configured, let's look at the next step. It says to configure directly attached static routes on HQ to reach the outside host. So I went ahead and put this up here. This is the address for the actual outside host itself. Now that's just the host. All right. So let's look at the whole network itself. Now, the network will be 209.165.200.0, okay, and then 255.255.255.224, okay, that's the whole network address. This is just that one host, okay, but we want the whole network address. So this is the actual start of the network at dot zero, okay, and then it runs through 31 as the last address. So we got 209.165.200.0 and 209.165.200.31 would be the broadcast. So this kind of fits nicely in that range. Okay. We want to make sure it's in the range. So we're going to configure on HQ another IP route. So it would be IP route 209.165.200.0. 255.255.255.254 and what interface because we're using the directly attached method here do we want to send it out of the primary one they say is serial 010 so we're going to do 010 here okay we get points for that but next we want to configure a backup. So we want to go to the same place but see how we have two links here this serial 011 we want to kick in if this top one were to go down. So we'll do 0011, but it says configure it with an administrative distance of 10. So we put 10 at the end of it. What that does is it tells us we're going to use this first one first, because remember it has an administrative distance of 1. 
all right? But then we're going to use this one as backup because this one has an administrative distance of 10. Remember, the lower the administrative distance, the better the route it looks at. So this one will not kick in unless this one is not working, okay? So if that top one, 010, goes down, this bottom one will kick in. So you have like some redundancy there, okay? Now it says configure a directly attached default route on R1. Now the word that should stand out to you right here is yes, the method directly attached, but default static route, okay? A default route on R1 means one thing, all zeros, okay? And that covers any network that your routing table doesn't know about. So it'll be IP route, and then again, it's all zeros, okay, for the destination. So that means anything that we don't know about in our address and table, this is what we're gonna do with it. We're gonna send it out of, and it says configure a directly attached route on R1. We're gonna send it out of S000 there. Okay, so anything we might not know about, we're gonna send it out of S000 to try to reach the outside host or up here or wherever we don't know about. Remember, your router only knows about what's directly attached to it in its address and table. So R1 has no idea how to get to the outside host up here, okay? Now, looks like we're at 80 out of 82. Um, let's see. All right, and I think I might know why. So right here, um, when we did our sub interfaces on R1, I don't remember doing this part. Um, if we go back into interface G0 slash 0 0.99, when we did the NCAP, um, we had to do NCAP.1Q99, but if it's the native one, you can actually type the word native at the end. If you do a question mark, it'll tell you. Um, and you'd only want to do that on the one that has the native VLAN, okay? So if you've got a sub interface for that native VLAN, then you want to make sure to do that. So NCAP.1Q99 native, all right? So that gives us a perfect 100 out of 100 or 82 out of 82 um, for this particular lab. So that concludes uh, Packet Tracer 6.4.1.2.